Will Day is an artist from southeast Queensland who has extensive experience playing live across this wide brown land, and he also releases great country rock tracks, including his latest hometown. He's playing at the Groundwater Country Music Festival in the second half of October and no doubt has other things on the go because he tends to. Hello, Will. How are you? Hi, Sophie. I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, yeah, you do always have a few things on the go, but I'm going to start with the latest track, which is Hometown, which was written during your recent trip to Nashville. I saw you posting about this trip on social media and it looked like you were there to do some other things. I think there was a talk you might have been giving. So please tell me what you were doing there. Yeah, so um, it's been it's been a goal of mine to get to Nashville for quite a few years, to be honest. Um, I've been there as a tourist 12, 13 years ago, but to, I wanted to go as an artist and songwriter. And um, the catalyst for that, for finally making it happen, was uh, in my other life, as well as a um, touring country artist and recording artist, I'm um, I'm the head of music at JMC Academy, which is a great ministries college, um, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne. Um, and as part of that, we do a lot of uh, kind of academic scholar scholarship, um, scholarly activities. So I presented a paper at the International Country Music Conference, which was at Belmont Uni, it was really awesome because I, um, through my research was uh, it was about a, a changing landscape in Australian country music production techniques and how we stand up in an inter international market. So um, I won't go on too long about that, but I got inter I interviewed Mel Dyer, John O'Keedles, uh, Michael Flanders, who's living over there, Mark O'Shea, amongst a bu bunch of other songwriters, uh, Max Jackson. Um, so um, that was really awesome, and so that kind of help uh, get me there and that was the first week and it was just a really awesome experience i was i was made welcome by um all of the the folks academic country music scholars essentially from all around america um, which was awesome um and then the second week i spent writing and i wrote hometown and i squeezed in six co-writes in about five days i got to play a show on broadway um uh alongside craig wayne boyd and shepherd who were living there and um, that was just a obviously for me you know playing a show on Broadway was absolutely awesome. And amongst other things, checked out CMA. So it was a, it was a fruitful trip, super inspiring. Um, and I'm already, I'm, I'm basically locking my dates for next year as well, as we speak. So. I've actually just come back from Nashville at the time we're talking. So I know exactly where you played, where you mm. said you played Broadway. Um, that is a heaving mass of humanity, all looking for music. <laughs> It is. It's a. It's an incredible place, as you know, and um, hive of activity. What I loved about Nashville is how. I mean, it was my first time there, right? And and all of the all of the I, I co-wrote with Troy Kemp, um, and the rest uh, were American writers who I've never met before, right? Um, and that's you know that's kind of why I was I was going there, and that was that was just so. Uh, it's such a. Uh, it's hard to describe, but they're they're so welcoming. They really are. Um, to to newcomers. Yeah, it was really, really quite an inspiring place. Um, and you can see why they call it Music City. So like I said, just can't wait to get back. So you mentioned when you started talking about the paper, you said you won't go into too much detail. It does, however, sound very interesting. So I'm wondering <laughs> if it's available for people to read online somewhere. It's it's not published yet, but I'm actually um look, I'm I'm considering I'm considering uh maybe doing down the track, probably not next year, but maybe putting a proposal for a PhD at some point through my job. Um, and what, and the reason, the reason is, the, I mean, I kind of, I'm quite inspired by the topic, right? Because I'm living and breathing it as an artist. And I got to actually meet a whole bunch of other people through the, the research that I did. And the other thing about where Australian country music is right now in, in the international playing, in this international space is that we're, it's it's thriving and it's building and it's quite um there's so many interesting things to dive into there with about authenticity what's what's Australian country music anymore that's that's what my paper was about so but people are welcome. I'm happy to email my paper through to anyone that asks there's no problem there so well I'm asking you also separately I'll give you an email address easy done easy done. I really I would I really, really like that. to read it because it, it does sound yeah I, I think it's it's really timely and pertinent um so so being in Nashville you mentioned you were doing some writing with apart from Troy Kemp, some writers you've never worked with before. So when you enter that writing room with writers you haven't worked with before, how do you make the connection? Is it just through the writing itself or do you feel like well, we need to kind of have a chat first, get to know each other? 
there's a bit of a chat. Um, a, a couple of the writers did. It wasn't. It was like straight into it, and that's that's okay because I've I've written like that before as well. And some of them more and more so get to know each other and hang out for a bit. But in in, in saying that, you, you you kind of into it pretty quickly because everyone's on a on a time frame. Everyone's busy. Um, and you want at the end of the day, you want to come out with a song. So there's a couple of niceties and you know um small talk and but what I really love about co-writing is we're we're there to work and and you actually get to know each other through the co-write anyway. There was a lot of a lot of this kind of so what would you say there will what would you say in australia a lot of that kind of thing um so a little a little bit of you doing and that's it's interesting because it links, links to my paper as well but um a lot of interesting uh cultural kind of um discoveries i suppose in lingo and, and slang and, and that kind of thing and um trying to be authentic something you'd say but also think outside the box a little bit so it's it's a journey you're going to the right that you, you get to, by the end of it you kind of go wow when are we doing this again so it's really cool right. did you go in with ideas for different songs that you wanted to flesh out or did ideas actually arise during the writing process yeah each each writes different um the first hometown was um bill de luigi one of the writers i wrote with for that he had that very solid idea um for a chorus anyway and we took it into the you know into the direction it did but um other rights i would come in with a very Often it just you just need a spark, and that's just a maybe a a hook or a, a line, or a, often for me it's a melody, um, and that kicked off the others. Generally, when most of the writes I did there, I came in with an idea because you want to if if you've organised a write, you kind of want to go well. You haven't just showed up unprepared, you know what I mean? So someone's got to kick start it, and generally that's me if I've lined it up. Yeah. So hometown is a bit of a heartbreaker. Uh, what was the idea behind that? As in, like the spark of it? Yeah. So as I said, Bill. He he played this chorus and he said, "We well, don't. I don't know if it's going to be a breakup song. Or I don't know if it's you know or it's going to be like a uh, wanting to get back to just like a, the, the small town vibe." And we thought, "Well, let's do the breakup thing." Um, well, that's that's kind of a, a way to get to the the hometown. And it's, so the, the story really is, if you listen to lyrics really carefully, it's the the singer or the storyteller in me talking to the town or the, the actual town itself and the and the town talking back to the storyteller but there's a, a girl and there's a, the love story involved or a forgotten love story involved there as well and um, we try we have the music videos coming out soon for it as well which we try to paint that picture but it was a really um it was kind of a really fulfilling right because we were there's there's a lot to the story it wasn't just because some songs you write the song right and it's cool and it could be a party song and there's not some, look let's face it they're not the deepest in deepest and most meaningful tunes right but this one has a lot of meaning and, and imagery, I think is the key word. And yeah. I just felt, I, I listened to it a bunch of times after it. And when I recorded it, Jared, my producer, did such a great job at capturing that with the production as well. So i um, very proud of, of especially being my first co-write in, in Nashville, very proud of how it turned out. Yeah. Yeah, it is a slower tempo than a lot of your material. Mm. So it, it's, it, and we can really hear your voice in it. Um, so I'm wondering if you're intentionally mixing up your sound that way, or it's just how that song came out. Um, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to write any ballads over there at all, because I don't write that many ballads anymore. And the last ballad I released was really Dear Dad on Father's Day in 2021, I think that was. So, um, but we had this song, and I just said to Karen, my manager, I said, you know. Um, I really like this song. I want to release it. Um, and it, it's interesting, Sophie, like, you know, every artist, whether they admit it or not, um, when you release a single, you, you're you wanting to put it out in a world where it's going to hopefully get on a playlist or hopefully do this or, hopefully, you know, let's let's be real. Um, but I was just really believe in this song. I just wanted to release it, um, I, I, you know, and what I've learned over time is that if you believe in the song and you're super proud of it, at the end of the day, that that's what really matters. And this song had such substance to it um and it, it just turned out that I, let's, let's do another ballad it's been a while and um so it was kind of not so purposeful just the fact that the song kind of led me there I guess mm -hmm. so when you said you don't write ballads so much anymore is that just because it's not a style of music that you you really love yourself or it probably doesn't work so much live you play quite a lot of festivals and I would imagine that up-tempo songs are your bread and butter for those festivals yeah, the, the live show and what I do live definitely kind of um, leads me on the path to what I release because you want to play as much original music as you can, but I'm high energy. I, tr I want to be high energy. The other thing too is I haven't released an album in, since Country Friday in a few years, so I'm actually looking forward to going back to putting some more ballads and, and slower tempo song as a body of work, whereas when you're releasing singles that you're going to play at a festival and you're kind of trying to portray what you do in the best light, well, upbeat is kind of where I tend to go, yeah.
Yeah. So you mentioned your producer, Jared Adlam, who is on the Gold Coast, I believe. So when you come back from Nashville, you bring the song to him. Do you then go through another process, almost like an editorial process with the song, the two of you discuss how you're going to create it? Yeah, so I sent Jared, it's a really good question. I sent Jared a bunch of just work tapes, as we call them. So literally, we do the right, um, we uh, we put it down on our iPhone in, in, in Nashville or the co-write, wherever you are. Um, and then uh, that kind of, form. then you listen to it a few weeks later. I send a bunch to Jared. I'm like, what do you think of these? And um, and we just, he actually really picked up on this song, actually, Hometown. And he said, oh, that's a re- that's, a, that's one of the best quality songs, I think, in there. So that's, what that's, I really liked that. And I thought, okay, well, then I went through the whole ballad process. Do I, really, do I do a ballad? And then I thought, yeah, like I was saying before, I believe in this song. So um, we fleshed out, we do some pre-production. Um um, we flesh out what we want it to kind of the direction we want to go production wise, tempo, feel, mood, instrumentation, all the things above, and then we go for it basically drums and bass and we're away. So So you mentioned that you uh out of that co-write you were keeping the song on your phone. Do you back up to the cloud, Will? I certainly hope so. If you're walking <laughs> co writes with song <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> oh, you have to uh, yeah, as you know, everything has to be backed up to the cloud. I'm you know, I'm, I'm assuming we're going up to the cloud right now. It's it's so <laughs> important. Um it's so it's so important because uh when you're songwriting, it's amazing how quickly something just evaporates. Um 30 seconds ago, even sometimes. Oh, what was that hook, man? I just can't, like, I can't, like, what was that? What did I sing? So the cloud is everything. <laughs> yeah, right. And I suppose it's evaporating because you're moving on, right? Like if you feel like that that song's done, then your brain doesn't need to retain it because you know you've recorded it, you move on. Yeah, even within the co right, you're moving on from an idea and you go, well, that didn't work. But then it, two minutes later, you might it might work. Like you've kind of got it in the in this kind of scrapping or holding holding being I guess where you go maybe we'll use that later let's put it down the bottom of the google doc and we'll bring it back maybe so yeah all yeah, right interesting so um your single before this one was find myself a dirt road which was uh the title suggests one sort of story almost like I'm gonna find myself a dirt road but actually it was a breakup song and it was it was not it's not a ballad but it's it, it's really heartfelt so what was the story behind that one yeah I wrote this with Jared actually um but this was this was written earlier this year and um, it was Jared's initial idea that um, he, he had a few. He said, what, what do you think about this? And we fleshed it out. We weren't sure to, whether we make it a breakup song or not. I don't, and it, when, I, when I released it, I remember thinking, I don't think I've ever released a breakup song. Um, so I thought, okay, well, try something new. Uh, why not? Um, and at the crux of it, though, it's kind of led by the breakup love story going wrong, whatever. But the crux of it is um, if you're overwhelmed by life or whatever, you, you, you just go and find some space, you know, um, and the country music imagery is that you go out and you find a dirt road or you find some some fresh air or open plains, whatever it is. So I guess it's about a, a person wanting to get away from all the all the baggage and all the trouble. Um, and in this case, it was a love story gone wrong. So, but with that, it's interesting you're talking about my changing sound. That kind of was the, that was, I really kind of stepped outside my regular kind of, um, uh, production style for that one there's no guitar solo it's not as guitar heavy um it's a little bit more on the pop side but it's i think i still try to capture me which was really cool it's a fun process that one actually yeah yeah it also made you a finalist in the nashville based 2024 unsigned only competition so you must have been very pleased about that i was i was really excited sophie for that because i've been assembly finalist a few times i'm an independent artist obviously and um you you enter these things all the time because, you know, um, we all need those opportunities. Um, well, we can dream of those opportunities if, if you win something like that. And, um, you know, it didn't get the gong in the end, but um, to be, you know, from the top, there's 5,000 entries or something, to be in the top 15 for the country section was really awesome. And and to be the only Aussie as well was was really cool um, amongst a bunch of other great American and Canadian, I think they were Canadian um, independent artists. Yeah, it's it's a, you got you got to celebrate the little, well, that wasn't an official win. Celebrate the wins on the road, I guess, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I, I always tend to think those finalist positions are wins because the, the winner themselves might be the consensus win, you know, sometimes having judged certain things in my mm. publishing, you know, sometimes it's the it's the everyone's second place who wins uh, because yeah. that's how you can reach a consensus. So just being in that that final bunch is really significant. Yeah, and it, it just... 
I guess the reality is it just gives you that little, all these, when something like that happens, you spend so much time working really hard, right? And when you get a little boost um, like that, um, it just kind of, it's it's like a little turbo charge and you go, maybe I'm doing something right. I, I don't really know. Maybe I am, as, you know, because um, we ever creatives, we we second guess ourselves all the time. Um, and it's nice to have that, I guess, a little bit of um, validation is an awful word, but um, it, it makes you feel proud about what you're releasing and someone else thinks it's all right, I suppose. So. Hmm. Do you tend to enter competitions partly to test your songs against what else is out there and see how they go or just because they're there to enter and who knows what may happen? Um, good question. Um, every time you release a song, you're testing it anyway. It's always a risk. You, you just te- you, you throw in a big pool of songs of, of, of in country music in my coach and you never know what's going to stick, you know. Um, like I said earlier, if you believe in that song, the rest is is the cream on top. Um, but for competitions, I think, like I said, being an independent, if there's a, if, if it's a reputable competition like this one and, and there's a great prize at the end of it, well, you know, that's the, the that if, if you end up, if you kind of, you know, end up jagging something and winning, it's like, it's a great boost financially and opportunity wise. So, you know, that's, that's why we all enter the end of the day is to, to try and get up, up the top and win it. But, um, but it is always nice to see how they do, how your songs do stand up against other especially on an international kind of uh, uh, in an international kind of pool of songs, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have Groundwater Country Music Festival coming up, just to change the subject there, (laughs) which is on on the 18th of the 20th of October on the Gold Coast. This is by now a very well-established festival and people flock to that area. Have you played it before? I have. I did the, I was thinking about this the other day. I, I did a festival and it was still called the Broad Beach Country Music Festival, which is quite a few years ago. Uh, and then I, I've done two or three since it's been groundwater. Um, I think the last one was just post COVID for memory. So, um, I've been wanting to get back for a few years and I'm, I'm really excited to be back and, um, playing on the surf parade, which I think is the main stage this year. So for me, that's, that's a real, um, that's a really exciting step up for me. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to bringing my, my festival set with the band and, and enjoying that moment. Um, I've got a couple other great shows as well. I mentioned earlier that you do play a lot of festivals. In fact, I would say they are a core competency of yours. And that's that's the significant thing, actually, because it's a different kind of performance. It's you've got to have a have a particular mindset and you do play them quite regularly. So what do you love most about being a festival artist? Such a special experience. Um I guess the thing is with a festival is you you're walking most of the time, most festivals have a great, have a great, a really nice big stage and great production and just this energy. There's this, this energy, even, I don't even mean on stage. I mean, we're just, when you walk in or you drive through the gate and you're like, Hey, I'm here, but I'm in a band. Like, and you, it's just this kind of, it's just, this really kind of, uh, and you get on edge a little bit. I, I love it. There's, and you see, and there's punters and there's, you know, um, you see a few people, you know, and you're like, all of a sudden it's, then it's showtime and you're antsy and nervous and, um it's it's uh and and a country crowd look a country crowd is the best they they just have this um a certain type of investment with uh how they portray their love for country music even if they don't really know that much about you or your songs that i just i love that feeling of being able to to do that and the best thing about a festival is you generally play well 75 80 90 percent or whatever are your songs and that's a great and it's kind of accepted to do that you know uh, which i really love um it's just a special feeling hard, hard to describe in words sorry but um yeah it's uh, it's the more the better hard to bring it on i love it well i guess it's it's also that because you're going to enjoy it the audience will enjoy it because that's that's a big part of being a successful performing artist i think is if you signify to the audience when you walk on stage that you are there and you're comfortable and you're happy and you're going to have fun then the audience relaxes i do think that's part of this part of stagecraft it is 100 stagecraft is everything i did that when i Look, when I did hundreds, if not probably more than that, uh, of like solo cover shows, doing my my time in the pub scene for many many years, um, you kind of learn about that, um, especially when there's no one's really listening as well, and it it, it can be tough, but you that's how you learn. Um, and I think the best when you do a festival and it's like it's it's a short time, right? So an hour set, ninety minute set, whatever it is, you've got. I just I love giving it everything because it's almost like to be honest, it's almost like a an outlet of all that. Because every artist will tell you that independence, whatever, there's so much work that goes on behind 
out mm -hmm. away from the from the stage so much and we you work so hard blood sweat tears dollars all of the above go into this thing um and that festival is just like ah oh, this is why i do this it's like this sweet it's like going to the gym for a country artist you know what i mean it's like this big release of energy which is awesome yeah yeah. Uh, I imagine you then disappointed when you set's over. It's like, oh, that's oh, the that's... come the come downs are worse. You know, it's like a yeah, the come downs are worse, and you kind of uh, like I, uh, I'm thinking back to my gimpy set earlier this year. We did the pre muster, and you're like, yeah, guys, that was great setting the band, and then it only takes like an hour, and you're back on the on the Bruce Highway driving home. You're like, oh, okay, so work tomorrow, and uh, yep, and that's that till the next one. It, it's a come down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was a pre-muster. There you go. I've missed out on that info. <laughs> there, there's a pre-muster. Uh, the GMP muster do it so well. They've got a week of entertainment before the actual muster starts. So um, it's it's quite impressive what they do there, yeah. Is that because people go and camp that early? Like, so they're, they're ready to go? Yeah, it's specifically designed for the campers um, because people will set up their, their campsites uh, a week or two or sometimes earlier, I think, before and um, such dedicated muster goers. Mm -hmm. Um and we did like the Monday night or something this this year. Um, so six days, I think, before five days, whatever, before the festival actually started. And we had a really awesome campus crowd and um, it's a special thing, yeah. Now, you also have a Christmas cruise coming up. It is in early November. It's not right near Christmas. It will be your third. What happens on these cruises? Uh, we have a really good time for about four hours uh, floating down the Brisbane River. Um from about 12 to 4, uh, a good time is had by all. And I, this will mean my third one. Uh, the last couple have sold out. Um, and for me, it's an opportunity to, I guess, party and, and have some fun with the, the people that follow me um, that get a ticket. But also it's a great opportunity for them to hear some other country artists, which I'm always big on. Um, and I, I, I cram in three three special guest spots as well to come on the cruise with me this year. Jake Whitaker, Caitlin Thomas and Mac Geiger. Um, so I love that. I love that having that platform for others to play. Just like, you know, I, I love playing on other people's shows as well. So it's a really good time this year, raising um, five bucks per ticket. I'm dedicating to the Charlie Teo Foundation, a very special connection too. So a bit of a special touch this year. And um, it's just fun. It is on the 9th of November and it's not Christmas, but I kind of go, you know what? Uh, and there's a few reasons for that with boat hire and all, all that kind of stuff. But I, I go... Hmm, you know what? I mean, if 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 Coles and Woolies have the the tinsel out in like September or August, I can have my Christmas cruise in mid November, whatever. <laughs> well, because I was just in the states, and it was yeah, quite a few weeks off having Halloween starting, and there was pumpkin spice everything everywhere. Oh, <laughs> oh right. okay, yeah. Halloween started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So into the spirit early, yeah. but it's just look, it's just a it's just a good way to con consume some country music. Um, hopefully it's it's a sunny day in Queensland on a particular day because it's really beautiful. Brisbane City. It's it's an interesting way to see uh, uh, the city itself and out to the wharf and stuff. It's it's quite beautiful. So tickets are available through your website. There is a link there. Um, and in and amongst cruising and groundwater and everything, you are working towards a new album, I believe. So where are you in that process? Yeah, I'm sort of. Um, I don't really know to be quite honest. I'm really. I'm writing. That's. I know that much. I'm writing and and getting a body of work. Um, I'm actually looking at doing, I'd like to do a bunch of demos around the quiet period around uh, maybe January, February. And um, I'm not sure of release. I've, I've got a, another release coming this year. We spoke of earlier and it's like I've crammed a lot in this year. So I'm writing, demoing, and then we'll see where we land. Maybe it's the second half of next year. I've kind of got to decide since my last album, I've released something like nine singles or, or maybe right. it's six or six. It's It's been a lot of singles, right? So I'm kind of going, well, what do I put on this album? Do I put some of them on or do I just start afresh? Um, so I'm working out that as well. And uh, as I said a couple of times, Sophie, I'm an independent artist. So the reality is we have to work out how the hell we pay for these things as well. Yeah. Um, so that's that's reality. Um, so, yeah, working towards getting the funds together and, and all sorts of things, but most importantly, the songs, getting the right songs um, and the rest looks after itself. So fingers crossed for next year, maybe the second half, something like that, yeah. There are also considerations like, as I understand it, if you put out an album, then as far as Spotify is concerned, it's like, well, that's it. Nothing else off that album is going to be on a playlist or considered a single. So, yeah, you have to think about, well, what what am I putting on this album? Who is it for? Like, what do I want to say with it? That's right. No, it's a really good point because release strategies and, you know, the waterfall releases and all that kind of stuff, that's fine. But once it's out there, it's out there. 
Um, and then if, if you've already released singles off it, you kind of go, well, if I mean, if I if I'm a uh, you know a Will Day fan or whatever, or if I'm you know I'm going, well, I've heard that. I want to hear new stuff on an album. But then you mm-hmm. go, well, but but what about the singles? Do you pre-release them or do you? It's kind of it's a funny world we live in with with digital now. So mm, it absolutely is. But in the meantime, your single hometown lives on streaming and people can find it there and you will be at Groundwater. The cruise does sound like a great idea for those people who are in the Brisbane area. So I'm going to leave it there. Will, great to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Always love our chats. Thanks, Sophie. Cheers.